Next speaker is uh, Gus Lee, and he spoke yesterday, and as I told you, he has many interests, and this might be his major one with uh, interstitial lung disease and running the uh, program at Jacksonville. So today he's going to talk about connective tissue disease associated interstitial lung disease. Gus? Thanks, Dr. Pagano. All right. Thank you for hanging in there this morning. We're almost done. So... Um, I'm g this talk is almost a wrap-up of what you've heard so far. And there are some key things that you've heard this morning about China, the importance of trying to distinguish IPF versus non-IPF, trying to get at that by determination of UIP. But an important clinical piece, too, that is determining whether there's, there truly is an idiopathic process, right? And one of the leading causes, of course, is connective tissue disease. So since it's getting late in the morning, I shuffled my slides a little bit and just put like a newspaper headline, sort of the themes that I'm going to go through as I go through the talk. So connective tissue disease ILD or associated ILD can have really any morphology. NSIP is probably across the board the most common, but UIP as well, organizing pneumonia, diffuse alveolar damage that you see in, in ARDS, lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. And it almost makes Dr. Tazlar's, almost makes Dr. Tazlar's talk irrelevant when you have an underlying diagnosis of connective tissue disease. So biopsy in general is not needed if you're suspecting or, or have diagnosed connective tissue disease. And then hammering home the point uh, the important point about distinguishing IPF from connective tissue disease associated ILD, uh, there are two main reasons for that, because no matter what the morphology is, it seems like across the board that injury pattern that you see in the biopsy or on the CAT scan seems to have a better prognosis than IPF of UIP, UIP of IPF. And then as one of the last questions from Dr. Wasilius' talk uh, indicated, it also has significant treatment implications. You know, that study with prednisone, azathioprine, which is commonly used in these autoimmune disorders, connective tissue disease, there's a signal for harm. So if you mistake, if you make the incorrect diagnosis and give these drugs, these immunomodulators, you risk um, hurting that patient. So more so than the radiologists, I think, and again, just these are half-truths, and more so than the pathologists, uh, this part of the exercise is all about you and the clinical work. You know, good history, a good physical. And then perhaps um, 